Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we'll be talking about the easiest healers to play in BFA and I've done a video like this before but the video that I did was months and months ago and it was covering healing classes in the from the beta basically and a lot has changed so in this video we'll be covering things like glimmer of light holy paladin how difficult it is to pick up how does the glimmer compare with other healing specs and we'll be looking at the rating scenario primarily if you want to see a mythic plus version of this please leave a comment below let me know if you are interested in seeing this video i'll probably will do something like that in the future but first i have to mention that when i say the easiest or hardest healers the difference between the hardest healer and the easiest healer is not that big i know this video is going to be ranking them from in an order or in placing them in certain groups but believe me, the difference is not that big. And most of the healers right now in Battle for Azeroth are quite easy to pick up. They might be harder to master, but they're still... The entry or the barrier of entry is not that high. So if you're looking to play a healer, right now is probably a good time to, to pick up one. Or see which healer is going to fit your style. And I made multiple videos about this. So first of all, before we're going to be ranking them, I have to implement a user case. So we're going to be looking at a average player someone who's familiar with world of warcraft who leveled a healer to 120 and who's about to enter battle of the Zal lore they might not be super familiar with our class they might not be super familiar with the dungeon itself with the damage patterns so this is a healer who's quite average and will be looking at the classes which will provide maybe the best healing output for them maybe the best survivability maybe the best mana consumption or a healing class that is going to provide just the best overall experience for this player so keep this in mind we're not looking at the best of the best players we're looking at someone who is just entering the new raid or is looking to do well with a certain healing class and before we're going to cover that as well we have to mention the difference between proactive and reactive healers and there is a very big difference because reactive healers are the type of healers that when there is damage coming out all of their spells or at least you'll be you'll start healing them you'll try and get someone from 50 percent hp to 100 percent hp when the damage happens and proactive healers are the type of healers that need to prepare before the damage happens so this involves a somewhat knowledgeable player who knows when the damage is going to happen let's say 10 seconds before the damage happens so straight away being a proactive healer is going to be harder than being reactive healer for someone who is new because if you have no idea about the damage patterns you're going to suffer as a proactive healer. Now let's look at number six and that is a Mistweaver Monk. Believe me, the next three healers I'm going to be covering, they're going to be ranked in certain brackets. They're going to be grouped together because I feel certain healers are very close to each other in terms of difficulty that they shouldn't be really ranked in a linear order, instead placed in groups. And this group is going to be, I'm going to name them C, B and A and A is going to be the most difficult and C is going to be the ones that are easier to play so keep that in mind but again Mistweaver Monks and the reason I'm placing them here is because majority of the healing abilities are smart heals Essence Font does not require any kind of selection it's just going to heal the people that are around you you have Renewing Mist which to some extent can be viewed as a smart hot that is going to jump from a person when they reach 100% HP when you cast Vivify it's going to heal the primary target that Vivify is being cast on. And it's also going to heal the people with Renewing Mist. And because Renewing Mist jumps from target to target, it is relatively little overhealing. So overall, playing Mistweaver, half of your battles are already done by the game itself. Because a lot of it is all smart healing. On top of that, it is a very reactive healer. Revival is the Mistweaver's 3-minute cooldown. And it can be viewed as one of the easiest cooldowns to use. It might not be the strongest. But it requires no cast time. You can cast it on the move. It is an instant healing burst to the group. And if you consider sniping, which means that uh, what is the possibility of other healers healing somebody else before you do in terms of revival? Revival is your best sniping tool in the game. So technically, it is very hard to kind of mess it up. It is high mobility healer. And I'm talking about how well they can go from place A to place B. They're very, very mobile, therefore you can avoid bad stuff easier. On top of that, you also have two defensive cooldowns, which, again, increases survivability. Some of the more difficult aspects of playing uh, playing Mistweaver Monk, mana consumption is huge. A lot of, and I mean a lot of players who come in to me because I do main a Mistweaver Monk, they're always complaining about the mana, and I complain about the mana, but especially for new players who might be overcasting Vivifies, they'll be very used to filling their you know downtime with filler abilities 
and vivify is very expensive a lot of the spells that misfire monks have are very expensive and i feel this is probably the biggest challenge that new players have how to not run out of mana when the boss is like 50 percent hp because i'm so used to casting filler abilities so keep that in mind but once you get used to it once you maybe pick up the alchemy trinket maybe you'll start using potions of replenishment it becomes easier and easier so overall that is a misweaver monk now let's look at number five and that is holy priest holy priest could have easily been placed as number six they're very interchangeable in my opinion and i feel holy priest to some extent for a new player might be not easier but might give better numbers than a misweaver because holy priest do not have the same mana consumption issues so and plus holy priests are extremely extremely strong right now in terms of raid healing they're a very very strong raid healing spec right now so if you look at what they provide you have two healing cooldowns with holy war salvation arguably the strongest healing cooldown in the game some of the difficult aspects with holy war salvation is that if you know how long the boss fight is going to last you might be able to fit in two holy war salvations but if you don't you're still fine by just using one holy war salvation during a fight it'll still provide a lot of healing divine him is another healing cooldown which again provides a lot of healing so you have two cooldowns to look after which are very very strong again they're a very reactive healer they provide a lot of healing or aoe healing abilities another thing to keep in mind is that prayer of healing which is one of your let's call it filler aoe abilities prayer of healing can be quite strong especially with certain artifact or azurite traits that you have prayer of healing does not have a cooldown unlike many other classes once they use their aoe abilities like wild goat essence font it goes on cooldown if a holy priest uses their aoe abilities and there's still continuous aoe damage happening they can just spam prayer of healing and cover the raid so keep that in mind it can be it can be somewhat strong and it can kind of hide your mistakes if you misuse your aoe abilities you can still use prayer of healing mana consumption again is pretty good some of the disadvantages pretty average defensives not amazing defensive so if you get caught you might be stuck at the same time average mobility you have feather which again is okay-ish it's not the best thing ever so overall can be regarded as pretty squishy and pretty slow and also you're required to stand still and you know majority of your heals require standing still so you kind of have to keep in mind and watch out for the bad stuff but that is just a general general advice let's look at number four and that is holy paladin now the reason i place holy paladin here is because i'm looking at glimmer of light holy paladin which straight away requires two or three specific azurite traits glimmer of light in order for you to be successful it requires a certain stat priority in raid environments where haste is going to be very 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 strong and this is a completely new build and there is still a lot of details coming out about the best ways to play this so overall with the lack of information well let, let's call it lack of information but because this is new i'm placing it in number four if i were looking at the average or the normal paladin build i would not place paladin here but overall glimmer of light it is a different play style you have to stand or be in melee of the boss you should be hitting the boss all the time with crusader strike with crusader smite talent which is going to help you to reset or at least get a lower cooldown holy shock it is very highly dependent on your cooldowns if you use your wings combined with holy avenger during that window you will be placing the most glimmers and if you're hitting the boss you could also reduce the cooldown even further so just because you have to stay close to the boss which can be somewhat difficult for certain bosses or new players who are not aware if whether there's going to be ads there whether the boss is going to be moved and things like that it can be somewhat difficult and because this is a new build i'm going to place it in number four but keep that in mind i feel this is not that of a hard healing spec to play even though it is new again holy paladin is very good personal cooldowns with bubble bubble can really really save your life if you know how to use it properly and on top of the fact that this glimmer holy paladin build basically uses very little mana you probably will never run out of mana or if you do run out of mana then you're not playing glimmer of light build properly this is very very nice for healers who might be scared about running out of mana because it is insanely efficient glimmer of light is an insanely efficient build right now so if you are scared about mana as a healer you might might consider actually trying holy paladin with this specific azurite trait combo now we're kind of entering the section of healers where you 
probably as a new player will have harder time to get good numbers or maybe maintain your mana or really know how to optimize the healers and this is going to be the b section and we finished off the c section and now we're going to number three which is going to be restoration druid and to be completely honest the number two and number three in this ranking interchangeable completely i feel the difference between them is very very small so resto druid has changed a lot in bfa in legion it was to be completely honest a very easy healer with a lot of the new players just spamming rejuvenation using wild world on cooldown and just then using tranquility and to be honest a lot of things have changed from becoming a tranquility bot at the start of bfa where tranquility was extremely strong and you picked inner peace and you just tried to get two minute tranks in every single position during the fight and tranquility would be like biggest part of your healing that has been nerfed and now everything is surrounding cooldowns you have a lot of mini cooldowns that can be made into bigger cooldowns with certain combinations or with certain chains of combos so it's not rejuvenation spam anymore it's all about making sure hey do i cast tranquility here and then extend the tranquility hot with flourish because there is a prolonged healing window here or maybe i should just use flourish by itself with maybe something like tree of life or maybe i should use innervate with lively spirit as a right trait which is going to give me a big intellect boost at the end of it and i'll combine that with like my troll berserking racial and i'll use that with flourish and then i'll use tranquility later down the line and then i'll try and squeeze in tree of life somewhere in there so knowledge of the fight is essential knowing how to chain your cooldowns is really really important some of the good aspects are healing on the move rest of is still the best healer on the move even though i feel this niche is kind of dying off at least in battle of the Zal lore tranquility is strong but requires standing still in terms of mobility or how fast you can go from a to b it's very decent it's not the best as it used to be rip displacer beast i still miss that ability so much and overall it still has good defenses but again knowledge of the fight resto druids are proactive healers you need to pre-hot 10 seconds before the damage is coming in you might start pre-hotting applying your rejuvenations if you start applying rejuvenations when the damage hits there is a high high chance that somebody else maybe miss weaver is going to snipe you maybe a restored shaman or holy paladin or whatever they're going to take your healing because you need to apply hots before the damage happens and how how much can you apply it depends too much pre-hotting can lead to mana issues as well so finding a balance between pre-hotting between chaining cooldowns is the key to playing a rest of Jew to a semi-decent or a decent extent so let's look at number two and that is rest of shamans and rest of shamans could very be could very easily be changed with rest of Jews in terms of difficulty there's not very much between them in my opinion rest of shamans have actually became easier to play in bfa while rest of Jews became harder to play rest of shamans revolved a lot around cloudburst and for the people who don't know what cloudburst is it's basically once you activate this totem any healing and overhealing is gonna or at least portion of that overhealing or healing is going to be placed in this totem and this totem is going to expire after a certain amount or can be activated by yourself to kind of provide this burst healing to everybody so timing this cloudburst with damage patterns or actually trying to optimize the healing during cloudburst is the name of the game and a lot of shamans used to try to optimize their healing during cloudburst in legion you only had one charge and in bfa with echoes of the elements you have two charges so the uptime of cloudburst is a lot higher so a lot of new players and a lot of players in general would just use cloudburst on cooldown and just try to cast their most optimal spells during it and they would probably see very decent numbers because the uptime is pretty good someone is a bit more experienced or knows the exact damage patterns they might be delaying their cloudburst a bit or they might be popping it earlier because they know hey i need to activate my cloud burst now because in two seconds or three seconds there's going to be no healing required for a good period of time so again there is sort of min maxing involved here but it's a lot easier overall there is quite a few spells that disappeared ancestral guidance is no longer here you could say that it's easier to play with less cooldowns unleash life is a thing now which is going to buff your direct healing ability 
and all of a sudden you might be able to come up with these juicy combos where you have Cloudburst available, where you get the High Tide Chain Heal buff, where you get the Unleash Life buff, and you'll be casting these juicy Chain Heals into the Cloudburst, or where the Cloudburst is going to pop at the right moment. So overall, it is easier to play, but still, Resto Shaman, in my opinion, is a type of healer that, again, Chain is becoming better, so it's easier to AoE heal, it's easier to optimize your healing during Cloud Burst by just casting Chain Heal, it can be still a, a very, very strong combo. There is so many utility abilities the Resto Shamans have to take care of. Re my Resto Shaman, the amount of keybinds that I have, it is far greater than any other healing spec in the game. There is so many utility totems, there is Bile Res, there is like Wind Windrush totem, there is so much. So trying to optimize every single scenario can be pretty hard. On top of that, healing on the move. Again, Spirit Walker's Grace is a thing, but during really heavy movement phases, it can still be pretty hard to optimize your healing. So that's the reason why I placed them in number two. And this finishes off the B section. And now we're going to the A bracket. And that is going to be, again, for I don't know how many years running, it's going to be a Discipline Priest. It is, again, another proactive healer. So overall, it feels, or at least it requires knowledge of the fight. And you need to have planning before you play a Discipline Priest. You need to apply atonements and maintain them during heavy AOE phases with Schism, Windows, and optimizing your Schism DPS during those heavy aoe phases is is mandatory and knowing when to do those dps phases as well is also mandatory overall it has average defensives it has decent healing on the move because you can still apply atonements during movement and you can use penance and things like that so they can still do things on the move you can almost also almost consider that the loss of lights rat made them easier to play because there's less cooldowns but again schism was introduced in bfa or at least it was made much more popular and it is one of those healers that i feel that new players will struggle with because i have done a lot of poke scenarios i've played with a lot of poke healers and it's very rare for me to see a discipline priest in poke raids doing well I've seen a lot of Discipline Priests doing amazing healing, but these are the type of healers that know exactly when the damage happens. These are the type of healers that know how to play their class to a crazy extent. But every time I go to Pugs, Discipline Priests always seem to suffer. And that is probably because they might not know the damage patterns. They might not be able to optimize their DPS, which in turn is going to heal everybody else if they have atonements out. So again, this was my list of the easiest healers. Again, the difference between the hardest and the easiest healer, I don't feel they're that big. I feel, don't be scared about this list. If you're a new healer, do try out Discipline Priest. You might really be comfortable with this kind of DPS into healing playstyle, especially if you are if you were playing a DPS class before as well. I do want to hear your opinion on this. This is a highly personal video. That is the main reason why I placed healers in brackets because I feel certain healers like the easiest healer, the second easiest healer and things like that, they can be kind of grouped up into one group. So let me let me know guys how you feel about this ranking. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please do subscribe and things like that. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video.